cloud is difficult to learn. Cloud is only for techies. Cloud certifications take a long time to do. No, no, and no again. Cloud is easy to learn. And you can do some of the beginner cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud in less than two weeks. How do I know? I'm Ranga Karnam. I'm 10x certified in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud as well. Our courses are helping thousands of learners do their cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. In this series of videos, we'll be focusing on cloud fundamentals. Once you understand the fundamentals of cloud, you will see that learning AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud becomes really, really easy. Are you ready to make learning cloud easy? Let's get started. In this video, let's focus on storage. In the last two videos, we talked about compute services in different cloud platforms. We looked at services which are related to virtual machines, managed services. We looked at some of the services which are related to containers and container orchestration with Kubernetes. And now we are shifting our attention to storage. There are different types of data that you would want to store. Structured data, unstructured data, and you would want to store it in different ways. You might want to store them in a block storage device or a file storage device or an object storage device or a database. Now, we use a lot of terminology until now. What does each one of those terminology mean? What does each one of those terminology mean? And what is the difference between them? And what are the services related to those specific things in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud? And as usual, we will use a lot of examples to discuss each one of these. Let's start with the use cases for different storages. Let's start with thinking about the different types of data that you would want to store, right? Whenever we talk about storing something, we might want to store files, right? These files might be of different types. There are text files, there might be video files, there might be audio files and exe files and things like that. Other than that, you might also want to store data. You might want to store data in tables with relationships, foreign keys, primary key, maybe in a NoSQL database and things like that. This specific category of data, which is stored in files, text files, video files, audio files, this is called unstructured storage. So it's called unstructured data. And this type of data, which is typically stored in maybe relational databases or NoSQL databases, this type of data, which is stored in tables, is called structured data. There are many variations in terms of structured data. We'll talk about it when we get to the databases next. But as far as this video is concerned, we are focused on unstructured data. What we want to look at in this specific thing is how do we store unstructured data in the cloud? How do I store different kinds of files? Let's say a text file, a HTML file, a video file, an audio file or an archive file, a zip file, right? So there are different files that you'd want to store and I would want to store them in the cloud. That basically is what is called unstructured data. And in this specific video, we would be focusing on how do you store unstructured data in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Let's look at a few use cases related to unstructured data, right? So let's start with the first use case. The first use case I would want to focus on is Attaching a hard disk, so you'd want to attach a hard disk to a virtual machine. So I have a virtual machine, and to this, I'd want to attach a hard disk, right? So this is use case number one. The second use case is a file share use case. I might have multiple virtual machines, right? So when we talk about virtual machines, I can create multiple of them. And I would want to create a file share and I would want to share it between these. So I would want to have some files in here, which I would want to be able to access from multiple virtual machines. These virtual machines might be inside our data center or maybe inside the cloud as well. And we would want to be able to access the shared drive. The third use case might be to create some kind of archive files. 
let's say I have a lot of zip files and I would want to store them very cheaply. So store archive files cheaply. So I would want to pay as minimum as possible and I would want to store files for archive purposes. These files might not be needed, but they are just stored for maybe regulatory reasons or maybe if something goes wrong, you might want to be able to take them, unzip and use the data which is present there. So you might want to store different kinds of archive files uh, or you might be doing a file data migration. So you might be doing a data migration uh, from cloud or actually from your data center to the cloud. And you would want to have a temporary store for all the things that you are uh, migrating. So these are the different use cases which are possible when I'm actually uh, looking at storing files. Another use case is maybe I would want to create a static website, right? So if I have a lot of HTML files, uh, I would want to probably create a folder with all the HTML files and I would want to create a static website with those things. Another use case might be, let's say there's a video upload platform, right? So there are people who are uploading and downloading videos or images. So video uploading slash downloading. It might be video files or it might be text files or it might be images. There are a lot of users who are uploading and downloading files and you would want to provide services related to that. You would, and you want to store the videos which are uploaded, the files which are uploaded it's in some place, right? So these are the different use cases that are present. And the, there are different types of storage that you would want to use for different types of use cases, right? So when you'd want to attach a hard disk to a virtual machine, the thing which you would want to make use of is block storage. So block storage is nothing but attaching your hard disk to your virtual machine. So to your virtual machine, a VM, you can attach one hard disk, or you might want to attach multiple hard disks to a single VM. However, once a hard disk is attached to one VM, you cannot attach it to another VM. Typically, block storages cannot be attached to multiple VMs. Most of the times in 99% of the scenarios, all the block storage devices will be attached to just one VM. A single VM can have multiple block storage devices attached, but a block storage device typically is attached with only one VM. This is like a hard disk attached to your computer, right? So it's only attached to one specific computer. So this is where you'd go for a block storage. The other type of storage is you want to create a file share. I want to create a file share and share it between multiple VMs and each of these VMs might also connect to multiple file shares as, as well. There might be two or three or 10 file shares and each of these virtual machines might want to connect to multiple file shares. So it's kind of many to many kind of a thing, right? So the file share option or the storage you would use when you would want to go for file sharing is called file storage. So typically whenever you talk about cloud, you would hear these terms called block storage, file storage. So block storage is typically for one virtual machine, for what block storage is typically only attached with one VM. So if you have a block storage device, it is attached to only one VM at a particular point in time. Whereas file storage is shared between multiple VMs. Let's look at the other use cases which are presented here. If you want to store archive files very, very cheaply, or if you want a temporary store for your data migration files, maybe a zip file or a database archive or a, a data analytics data archive, right? So there are a lot of different types of data that you might want to migrate to the cloud. And all those things can be stored in a specific type of storage. If you want to create a, a static website, right? So you have a lot of HTML files, maybe a few image files, CSS files, and you'd create a static website with them. Right, so even that is a specific type of storage. And for video uploading and downloading. So you have users who are uploading files, images, text files, and things like that, and you'd want to be able to store them. For all these use cases, the type of storage which is recommended is called object storage. So until now, 
we are looking at the different types of storages and the use cases related to them. Let's quickly review them. If you want a storage device which can be attached only with one VM, then you'd go for block. This is similar to a hard disk attached to your computer. If we would want to create a file share and you'd want to connect multiple VMs, then you'd go for file storage. And all other use cases where you are dealing with files, whether you'd want to store archive files, whether you'd want to have a temporary store for data migration, or you'd want to create a static website, or you'd want to upload and download files. So you want to provide that feature to your users, and you'd want to be able to store your files somewhere and retrieve them when needed. In all these kinds of situations, you would go for object storage. So let's now quickly look at each of these and look at the services which are related to them. We talked about block storage first, right? So we talked about the fact that a block storage device is attached only with one VM at a, at a particular point in time. And the block storage service in AWS is called Elastic Block Store. Don't get confused with Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is a compute related service. The thing which we are talking about in here is Elastic Block Storage. So a lot of people get confused because it's kind of abbreviated the same way. Typically, the abbreviation EBS is used for Elastic Block Store. Whenever I talk about Elastic Beanstalk, which is the compute service, I will write the complete name. So whenever we write EBS, it's Elastic Block Store. And the Elastic Block Store is the block storage service in AWS. When you create a virtual machine, by default, an uh, elastic block storage device is created and attached with your VM. So that's the service in AWS. In Azure, it's called Azure Disks. It's called Azure Disks. And in GCP, it's called Persistent Disks. So the block storage devices in different clouds are Elastic Block Store, Azure Disks, and persistent this all these do the same thing right if i'm in google cloud if i'm using google compute engine to create a virtual machine what it does is it creates a virtual machine for me and it also creates a persistent disk because i would want my hard disk to have the operating system and that's where the operating system loads from so you have a persistent disk where your operating system is loaded from and it is attached to your vm similarly if i'm using azure Let's say I'm using Azure VMs to create a VM. Uh, Azure disk is created and attached with the VM. Same is the case in AWS when I'm using EC2 to create a VM. An Elastic Block Store device is automatically attached with your EC2 instance. So these are the different block storage devices or the block storage services in different clouds. Now, let's look at the file share services. If I would want to create a file share and attach with the VM, the service I would go for in AWS is EF. Yes, Elastic File Store. And in Azure, do you want to guess? It's called Azure Files. And in Google Cloud, it's called Cloud File Store. So you can use these to create a file share. So you can create a file share, and then you can have it attached with multiple VMs. Once you have a file share, you can execute a few commands and attach it to a specific VM. These VMs can do both write, read and writes. So similar to that, you can add other VMs and access the files which are present in the file store. And the last service we would want to talk about is the object storage. Actually, object storages are one of the most popularly used storages in the cloud. Uh, if you the, what, the first object storage service in the cloud, which was really, really popular, is Amazon S3, simple storage service. And S3 uh, was one of the first services that was launched in AWS. Maybe it can even be the first service that was launched by AWS. AWS today offers almost 200 or 300 services. Among them, S3 is one of the first. And uh, AWS found a lot of use cases where S3 can be useful. We already talked about them, right? Storing archive files, uh, in the case, like storing temporary files in the case of data migration, or creating a static website, or creating a website where you'd want to actually allow users to upload and store files. So some kind of user-generated content. So for all those use cases, S3 is really, really useful. And you'd see that all the other cloud providers also started providing object storage services. In Azure, 
the object storage service is called Azure Blob Storage. So it's Azure Blob Storage. And in Google Cloud, it's called Cloud Storage. Simple. <laughs> Google makes it really real. The naming of Google is pretty simple, right? So it's just called cloud storage. <laughs> so yeah, these are the different object storage services which are present in different clouds. Uh, discussing object storage takes a long time because there are a lot of features that it provides. What we will do is we'll discuss object storage in depth in a subsequent video. In this specific video, we focused on understanding the different types of storage which are present in the cloud. A lot of people struggle with the differences between block storage versus file storage versus object storage. The goal of this particular video was to help you understand what are the differences. You go for block storage when you want to attach a hard disk with your VM. You go for file storage when you want to attach a file share with your VM. For most of the other use cases where you want to store archive files, you want to create a static website, or you'd want to be able to store user generated data or user uploaded data. In all those cases, you would go for object storage services. And we looked at all these services, examples of all these services in different cloud platforms. We looked at the fact that Elastic Beanstalk, or actually, <laughs> so I'm making the same mistake now. It's called Elastic Block Store. So Elastic Block Store is the block storage device in AWS. Azure Disks is the one in Azure. And the Persistent Disk is the block storage device in GCP. And the file shares, file sharing kind of service, the file storage, uh, services in AWS is EFS, in Azure is Azure Files, and in GCP it's called File Store. And the object storage devices or the object storage services in AWS are S3, in Azure it's called Azure Blob Storage, and in Google Cloud it's called Cloud Storage. I'm sure you are having a wonderful time. We'll talk about object storage a little later as well. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. Do not keep it to yourself. Tell your friends and tell YouTube as well. How do you do that? Like, share, and subscribe. If you're looking to get cloud certified, check out our cloud certification courses in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And do not forget to check out the other videos in this series of videos on cloud fundamentals. If there is a cloud topic that you're feeling it's very, very difficult to understand, do post it in the comments and we will make it simple for you. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Until then, here's bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes. See you soon.